deeper than music. The core of you, the fans, the truth is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. It's deeper than music. Deeper than music. The core of you, the fans, the truth is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. It's deeper than music. Deeper than music. Hello, 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 good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, deeper than music behind every great song, there's an even greater story. I'd like to say what's up to everybody listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, and also the Nias Media Roku channel. Check us out, N-I-O-U-S Media Roku channel. And I also want to say, uh, check out the new podcast, uh, The Arcade Cabinet with myself, Gunner, Bill Tindo, and Sharon. Uh, today we have our... Our special guest from uh, UK, uh, Final Cut, uh, Final Final Cut re- movie reviews. We have Dean, but we're gonna mash it up. This is like a big conglomerate, big. Uh, this is like a Wu Tang thing right now. Uh, Wu Tang Clan coming <laughs> at you. We have uh, the Arcade Cabinet with us, and we're gonna discuss movies. So, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome uh, Dino, and also the Arcade Cabinet crew, Bill Tindo, Sharon, and also Gunner. Dean, how you doing on the other side of the pond? How's everything going? Everything's going all right. It's been very hot. It still is hot, actually. But yeah, things are gradually returning to normal, thankfully. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. I, I, I unknowingly, in this pandemic, I, I go to Amazon Prime a lot. I've rented a lot of movies. Yeah. The movie that I rented, I can't remember the name. It was a horror movie, but it was the sequel to The Shining. I wish I remember. Oh, Doctor Sleep. Yeah. Did yeah, you, Dark have, you, have, you, have you seen it? And what was your thoughts? Not yet. I haven't seen it yet. I didn't even know it was on Amazon Prime, otherwise I'd have watched it. Yeah, but I haven't seen it either. I have not seen it. I think I you did, should watch uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, you do. That. You think it's worth? I, I I didn't realize it was I didn't realize it was The Shining until oh, I was yeah, further yeah. into it, and I was like, oh damn, this is the uh, yeah, it's the kid from there. It's the sequel. Yeah. Uh, it's not bad. I, I watched it's long I'll tell you that but it's, it's a not long one. yeah well maybe I'll watch that tonight because they the got only, the only complaint that I got the only complaint that I have yeah. is I wish they would have uh, CGI'd Jack Nicholson I mean it took mm. me a minute to realize when he was in the movie or his character was in the movie but I wish they would have they would have star right. star uh, Star Wars um, uh, f- uh, f- Fast face him, him up actually yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I get that. Well, so, I want to spoil it for you, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you the end if you haven't seen. No, it's a good one. I, I think you guys should watch it. Um, it was pretty good. It was a little lengthy, but it's good. It, it's worth. Well, watching. I know that another I one my girlfriend I likes is a uh, quiet place. Oh, oh yeah, that's, yeah, really that's good. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. yeah you know, that That's was the first really time good. I ever saw uh, John Krasinski jump out of the office type role. I know he had done Yeah, the yeah, I know. Uh, Never, but but who cares Jim about from the that? office. Everybody yeah. knows him as Jim he from the jumped office. Out of that role and really showed you that he could play a different character. Right. And if I'm right, I think he directed A Quiet Place also. He did? And I, he did. I, I he think did. He did. Really yeah. He did. Well done. They built the suspense. He built the drama. He made you nervous. You know. Right. Yeah. With, right. a, with a movie like that, that's what you want to feel. You want to feel nervous, man. Yeah. All right. And and keep that thought. Fire. Keep that thought. We're gonna segue into Dino. Go ahead and tell us what we're talking about today. All right, gentlemen. I think you'll enjoy this since we have a few horror fans here. So. Seeing as we're, we love horror movies, so the question is, what makes a horror movie for us individually? Our suspense, for sure. Suspense. Mm. Got to have the suspense. If it's a horror movie and it's unsuspenseful, it just seems dumb. Camera angles. Dark hallways. Mm. One of the best movies I've seen in a very long time that did that next to a quiet place was the original Conjuring. You know, because it, it oh, yeah, me, the Conjuring me, really was good. Stuff. You know, it's like you're looking down the hallway and you're afraid that something is there, but you know it's really not. And it plays on your psyche. You mm-hmm. know, so that does it. 
Right. You know, I mean, I live with myself, and I'll sit, I'll sit in my room, yeah, okay. and I can look down my hallway, and it's like, what if something comes out of the next room? You know, I've seen all those. The Conjuring is gold. Mm. I like the Nun too, and all of those. Yeah, those are really, really good. Don't get me wrong. I like a good slasher flick. You know, I was. Young in the 80s, you know, Freddy, Jason, Mike Myers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Freddy Krueger's just slash the flick. But at the same time, for me, good horror is completely psychological horror. You know? Yeah, okay. Where, yeah like kind of like Blair Witch. Jump yeah. scares, they're kind of cheap and cheesy, and I think good horror movies might have a couple in there because mm-hmm. you want a couple jump scares. But for the most part, I want it in here. You know, yeah, I yeah, want yeah. To be uncomfortable. I right. want to be nervous. I don't. Have you ever seen uh, The Witch? No, I haven't. But I never got to watch it. That's like that. I think I you say, like The Witch. But no. I would say for me, it's like you said. It's got to be a good uh, storyline, suspense. But also the yeah. key ingredient is the sounds, man. Like the mm. eerie oh, sounds. Yeah, the sound effects are. It's all about the I'm, sounds. I'm glad the you music pulled that and out. everything. The music they set the mood. Mm creaky doors, you know, just wind. Right. You know, it's like a low-key, you know, I watch wind everything. Blowing, in the knocking, knocking shutters on the sides of the houses and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I'm so yeah. glad you wore that up, Marcus, because I actually uh, did watch um, the original Suspiria, and the music in that is absolutely terrifying. It terrified me just listening to it. Nice. And it's kind of there, uh, it's kind of like in the, I will say in the tone of Halloween, but the tone is a bit more quicker than, say, a movie of today would be. But it just fills you with so much dread. You know something's going to happen, but at the same time, it's kind of like, well, when's it coming? Because it just keeps suspense. The suspense is just ongoing, completely ongoing. And it's like, is it ever going to happen? I'm actually at the peak of my terrifiedness here. Yeah, yeah suspense is my main thing for horror movies. Hmm, what do you think about when they do a, a musical fake out? In a horror movie, the, the the musical score brings up all this uh, tenseness and it builds to a building mm. point. <clears throat> You're expecting the jump scare. Nothing mm. happens. The music's yeah. back out. And then boom. Gotcha. That's perfect. Because <laughs> even, you know, cause even like... Scary- um, like the... What's that? Like these unnatural, just crazy sounds. Yeah. Um, that's what that's what gets you and then for me it's not necessarily i'm more scared of like the ghost ghost stories mm. of like like dead people like um some people I don't me. like the the uh the the sixth sense was scary as hell to me because it's like mm. i could see that happening you know what i mean like there's that's been times scary. where i seen something in the corner of my eyes and i actually lived in new orleans for four years oh, so i heard about voodoo and ghosts coming back yeah. to life and all that craziness yeah. Like the yeah, there, and stuff like there that. is another thing that r- makes a horror movie for me. No CGI if it can be avoided. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Because Insidious, I was absolutely enjoying it until I think it's about, say, 10, 15 minutes from the end. Okay. Where the villain is literally running across the wall and you can see it's CGI and it's kind of like, right, yeah, that's just ruined CGI it for me completely. Just ruins a movie. It just rips bad you out. CGI of it. is like annoying. Oh. But I, yeah. I will say, chaps, I will say one thing, though. If in the 70s and 80s, when we were growing up, CGI was, yes, it was fake, but for some strange reason, it was just so much more believable than it is oh, today. Yeah. yeah, It was well, so much I'm, more terrifying as well. I'm a huge proponent of practical effects, and I think our movie industry in general is uh, CGI heavy. Like, yeah. I think they need to start moving oh. back towards practical effects. Practical yeah. effects... They look realer. I mean, things have weight to them. Things have, you know, the right lighting. It doesn't yeah. look fake. Your brain How puts. I feel about that is you know, one of the, the best in Star Wars. You know, one of the best horror movies that I saw when I was a young that that scared the devil out of me, and that was on PG. Was the original Poltergeist. Oh yeah, Poltergeist yeah, oh, was, yeah. yeah. Had, you know, and I showed it to like all my kids. Yeah, you know, I like to show it to them at a young age because you know. I mean that, that's that's what I saw. Yeah, that, that's, and, and I think that's what ruined um, for me. That's what ruined it too. Was the CGI mm. towards the end? It was just like, eh, eh. I never yeah. watched. You know, 
what, what I had this discussion with my daughter, and my my feelings for the movie It as opposed to the remake was when you originally watched It when we were younger, and it was the Tim Curry It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oof, felt yeah. Like a real and present danger to you and these children. Like yeah. at any moment, he could reach out of the sewer and yank you in. Whereas the newer version was a little bit more supernatural, more psychological. Mm. Built first guard was a supernatural threat as opposed to a real and present real danger. Given oh. I don't know. I'm going to vote Tim Curry on it. Uh, yeah, I've seen the both new ones, actually. I never fully saw that yet. I you know, I think the old ones, both the new ones, but uh, yeah. I think the, the, the second it—I mean, the second it was a little bit more violent. Like the beginning with the kid, I did not expect him to get get taken out like that in the beginning. Right. Yeah, the dude, he gets ripped apart. Yeah. Uh, I mean, who doesn't yeah. like a, a good plot twist? I mean, that's what the, the Saw franchise was brilliant at. Oh, However, yeah. many, there's about nine movies. There was always a twist at the end you never saw coming. Like right. in the first, like in the first one when Tobin Bell, who's Jigsaw, is actually the man who is actually supposedly dead in the middle. Right. You didn't expect, don't expect that. In the second one, you don't expect uh, the apprentice to be to be the uh, killer as well. In the third one, you don't expect. Uh, oh, what was the third one? It's been that long since I've watched it. But you get the, you get the gist. There's always like a nice twist, like you don't see coming, and you kind of like, oh yeah, that's a, oh yeah, yeah. Man, um, of, isn't there another one, Jigsaw? Didn't another one just come out? Yeah, yeah it was a couple of years ago. Theaters, actually. Um, I'm, I feel like uh, with the Saw movies, kind of the same way I feel about Assassin's Creed. Like, how long do you need to milk a franchise? <laughs> kind of yeah. true, though. Kind of true. I, I, had, I had to start watching Saw because it was, it was it was getting a bit too grisly, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I have, like I said, when you're playing a surround sound, and you start hearing fingernails ripping off and everything. It's like that's that's a, that's a bit much for me. But yeah, I did watch the last. You say that, but I, you know, I enjoy the good uh, genre of horror movies that was real prevalent. You know, 10, 15 years back, the torture porn movies. You know, you're looking at movies like Hostel and uh, oh, Red yeah. Hostel. Yeah, yeah, okay. And right along those lines, they just released uh, the Green Volcano, like in the last two years. And yeah. I, I thought that was an amazing movie. I do like the over-the-top Grizzly from time to time. You know? <laughs> have, you you ever got... seen, have you ever seen one called uh, Cannibal Holocaust? Oh, don't mention that. Most don't mention that. <laughs> please. please don't mention that. <laughs> I never got the fight. Cannibal <laughs> Holocaust. <laughs> Dino's over here like, gosh. No. I actually did know of it before I was actually 18 I actually bought my former best friend it and the worst thing is I don't even know if he watched it but if he had a modicum of sense he wouldn't have mm. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel about the remakes man uh, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and throw that Freddy Krueger one out the in the what trash remakes, but man. what about the um, was it Rob Yo, Zombie yeah, that re- redid that the, um, right the, the Halloweens sure. how do you feel about those I don't know. The best remake that I honestly can say that I've seen, which is actually a remake, was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was the best remake. Oh, you like that? I've seen that. That's fun. You like that? The one with Jessica Biel back in 2003. That was Because I remember one, well, at the time, my wife was pregnant, and she wouldn't, she wouldn't go with me to the movies to watch it. But she did go watch Jason vs. Freddy. But it's just it's something about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't like Jason vs. Freddy very much. But I have a recommendation, actually. It's a, a Netflix original, but it's honestly pretty good. It's called In the Tall Grass. Mm. Seen it. That's that was, really good. That movie was written by Joe Hill and Stephen King. And for oh, people okay, that don't know, yeah. Joe Hill is actually Stephen King's son, but right. never used the King name because he didn't want to make his career on his father's name. Also, yeah, the good. creator of the Netflix series and original comic book series, Lock and Key. Yes, Joe yeah, Hill, I've heard about it. guy. In the Tall Grass was a great movie. No, Way good. Out. Way good movie. Yeah. You seen it? Dino, have you seen it? Have I? 
Uh, not yet. I didn't even. I've I've heard of Lock and Key, but I haven't watched it yet. Just the problem. That's the problem with uh, streaming services. There's always so much to watch, but you have so oh, little yeah. time to watch oh, it. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like roulette, though. You're gonna pick one, and yeah, it's either gonna be a dud or it's gonna go off. Right. Yeah. Hey, you, you might get lucky and pick the platform because that turned out to be a great movie. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the yeah. platform. Or you good. might get uh, very unlucky and pick the floor is lava. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the oh. one with that? Uh, that one uh, I haven't seen yet. The centipede man or. That, oh, oh, God. oh, no, not the human centipede. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> the the I actually <laughs> like the human centipede. It, it's it's fucking, that's a crazy it. ass movie. That's Just probably the, the name, lowest I've never of the low it. of horror movies you can yeah. possibly watch. Yeah, it's <laughs> just shock for the sake of shock. There's no actual substance to it. It's oh, all no, sudden. there's not. I've no, seen all of them, too. I've seen every last one of those. Mm-mm. He is a so you're not drawing tie by because you're talking about it. <laughs> but the one, how about the prophecy? Oh, that, scared, oh. that scared the hell out of me. The prophecy, mm-hmm. yeah, that one. Christopher Walken. Yeah. yeah. He's one yeah, of my right favorite actors. I was learning who Christopher Walken was, and it took me a long time to get him out of my head as a I like, uh, I like yes. him in uh, Pulp Fiction, actually, when he's talking about the watch. <laughs> I have seen that in a while. So, Dino, do you think, in your opinion, with technology, are the older movies better than the newer horror movies, or? Or not. Um, I'll say older is better, but mm. in in the terms of um, Freddy Alvarez's Evil Dead and Don't Breathe, mm. it's kind of looking a bit plump very promising for, I'll say, newer horror, but everyone's just so fixed on CGI, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're sort of like the real hardcore horror fans, aren't we? We could, we can literally say that in each other's company and say yes. We're mm-hmm. sort of, we're the hardcore horror fans who don't like CGI, we like our films bloody, we like yeah. this, that, and the other, etc, etc. And we would rather watch old school horror than new school horror. With the exception, obviously, of Evil Dead and Don't Breathe, because they are absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I'm thinking of one movie, but I can't remember the name. I always forget the name. It was directed by Quentin Tarantino, and it's the one where he drives the uh, car with the skull on it. Oh, yeah, Jets? I know which one it is. It's um, Grindhouse, no, isn't it? It's, it's a Grindhouse, yeah, it's a Grindhouse film. Is it? Uh, is, was it the first one, or was it the second one? Planet Terror and Death Proof. the second one. Yeah, that's it, yeah, Pla- Planet Terror, yeah, and Death Proof. Oh, yeah, 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 that's it. Uh, but, uh, oh, what were you, Mark, what were you saying? Which movie? Oh, no, I was going to say, like, um, oh, I was Devil's thinking of... Rejects. I've seen Devil's Rejects, that's a good one. That was Rob yeah. Zombie, right? Yeah, Rob Zombie. Zombie. I, I will admit, not many people like his Halloween remake, but for me, that is my sort of movie. It was that brutal. Was it was. It was it's brutal. It's the second one was. The second one was a bit. But the first one I, was absolute gold. I agree yeah. with you completely, and I have never laughed so hard at a deleted scene in a horror movie as when Mike Myers walks away from the hall and turns around and gets a little alarm. In the um, I, I thought it was hilarious. It was in the deleted scene, but I thought Paul Zombie did an amazing job with Halloween. I got mm. no. Oh, so- and the other thing is, it kind of explained Michael Myers' backstory a little bit, whereas yeah. all the other Halloweens haven't. No, no. And, and jumbled interpretations that didn't really mess well together and mm. didn't make sense. Whereas Rob Zombie gave you a cohesive. <laughs> And I wanted to talk about um, CGI, but the art of the art of the makeup artist, like John Landis. Um, yeah. Like I saw Pet Cemetery, the second one, it sucked. But Pet Cemetery <laughs> one, yeah, I mean the, the 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 original, yeah, it was the damn, it was the it was the makeup, it was the, the guy knees, being dead as hell, the blood, the gush. Right. And like yeah, Dino was saying, up. like you don't get that with CGI, like those little details. Um, yeah, American, mm-hmm. uh, American mm-hmm. Werewolf in London. You know, it was the oh god, the, the effects, and <laughs> oh, all that stuff, the, the artwork. I say what, the I say what there is, gentlemen. Sorry, mm-hmm. I've, I have said, I think I've said this to you, Marcus, a few times. But 
I have actually said that Asian horror is severely underrated. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, can, I, I agree. Because I mean, Parasite's just come out, and it's won literally every single award under under the uh, under, under oh, yeah, the South Korean sun, right. literally. Yeah. Uh, have you seen yeah. the Tale of Two Sisters, the Korean horror movie? No, not yet. It, um, it's been out for like ten years, but it's it's a really really good one. Cool. I've actually got the original Ryu trilogy, that, the yeah. Japanese one, and I didn't watch it because I know how scary it is. Right. I have. Yeah. I have, this is coming from a guy who will literally watch anything, but he refuses to watch <laughs> Japanese horror simply because he knows how scary it is. <laughs> that, what about what about the Boogeyman? Oh God, that, that movie that film was, was so awful. bad. Yeah, oh, God. you know what? You brought that up a good one. Bad. You brought up a good mm-hmm. one. I don't know if they released it yet, and I'm kind of like it's not going to be as good as the original, um, the Candyman, the remake. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Candyman. Okay, I will yeah. say one thing, chaps. Jordan Peele's behind that. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, he is? Okay. So, yeah. I'm yeah. Kind of, I kind of have cool. high hopes, but at the same time, I'm not setting the high hopes too high, just in case it's kind of a bit... Mm. Right. Me, personally, I'm a huge fan of Wes Craven. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. If, if you are not a proper horror fan, if you don't like any of Wes Craven's Wes work... Wes Craven's awesome. I actually kind of got into the franchise, obviously, because of Alien, but... The first right. horror movie, aside from that, I watched was actually Scream. And then oh, it sort of yeah, went gosh, Scream that's... from there, then it went, obviously, with all of West, other um, Wes Craven's work. And all of Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. Play us out. I kind of, that... I think the first I... couple Freddy Krueger's were scary, but then he, did, he just became a comedian. I was just like, yeah. Right, I... he did. He made him funny. It's too cheesy. Did, it kind yeah. of went a bit downhill when Nancy Myers died. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it happens to every franchise because Freddy got more comical and cheesy, and then you end up with Jason in space, Jason X for Friday the Night. Yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> you know, the franchise you guys, is dead. On in space, it's done. What did you guys remember? Was- remember they had like the series? It was like a mini series, the Freddy Krueger mini series that would come on TV. It was like on Fox or something like that. I think that actually. was a bit before my time, chaps. To be honest, yeah, that's before <laughs> me too. I never. Not to I mention, us in England probably wouldn't show it anyway. Or if it was, it was probably like one yeah. o'clock in the morning he, when all the good stuff usually is shown. He had he had a yeah. mini series. It was on like a regular cable. It was kind of like uh, Tales that's from the crazy. Crypt. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I love that. He never, I didn't never interact that, actually when, yeah, I, was, when cool. I was a bit younger. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, Dean, I have a question for you. Do you Go think um, modern horror movies aren't as good as past horror movies for the simple fact that the, all the movies in the past were showing us things for the first time mm. and the new m- movies are failing to innovate on that? and not show us as many new things. I would agree with that. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. a good call, Bill, actually. That's really good. But I like the like the bird box and, and what was that uh I hate the quiet bird space. Box. It's kinda different. I didn't mind like I didn't mind bird box, but I think what kind of ruined it was all the memes that came out for it. Machine gun yeah. Kelly. Sorry about that man. <laughs> Bad guy. <Nah>. Yeah. <laughs> He did a good job, though. Talk, Machine Gun Kelly, well, yeah, Bill, he impressed me as an actor. About guys wearing man Look, buns. I do not like Machine Gun Kelly. Well, you said you don't like guys that wear man buns and try to tell you vape, so he vape shit, and that's what Machine yeah, Gun oh, Kelly is. But, you know, I, I enjoyed Machine Gun Kelly in Burt, in Bird Box, and also um, the Motley Crue movie, The Dirt. Oh, oh man, it was not that one either. And... So what what are the what are the the horror movies Dino you know, that you think totally missed their mark that like, were just oh, horrible? Yeah, good question, great question. Let's How much time have you got? <laughs> <laughs> I am yeah, literally it. looking at that's my horror, my collection of. here, and I'm just actually seeing if there's anything. I suppose you could say the Blade franchise went downhill after the first one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Blade I didn't like the second one. Went from the Blood God to Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds yeah, threw me off. I was like, "Is he actually a blade?" <laughs> Deadpool's in here. He wasn't Deadpool then, though. Can we class Terminator as horror? 
action. I think Terminator action might be the action. But it did have its horror elements. It did have Particularly in the first though. one. Really the first did. one was scary as hell. Yeah. I mean, they were yeah. by an unkillable creature, so it kind of has that horror element. That's to true, it. though. If you want to talk about a series that really went down, you know, we got to talk about the Terminator. <laughs> no, I, like Terminator. I did go down ill severely after T2. I, I must admit, in my collection, I'll put my hands up here. Yeah. I did actually, I have actually got Terminator 3. I think I've got <laughs> Salvation, but I'm pretty sure I bought it for like £2. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. I haven't got Genesis two. only because it was wasted. Dark Fate I felt was was a good try, but at the end of the same at the same point, it's just not T two. No, right. No, yeah, no doubt. I think the I think the thing is, chaps, I think when you hit the bar in a certain in a franchise, whichever movie it is, it just kind of hard to put it over that bar. Yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people have trouble just admitting it when the run's over. And like, when it's it's got to take it. somebody to realize that they're jumping the shark. You but know? Think, of, think about this, it, but Hollywood in general, they just keep recycling, recycling, exactly. recycling. They, they just don't get it. It's like, how many times are you going to recycle the same old thing? Well, as long as it's profitable. Can Can Stephen King do no wrong? Has he, has he hit a brick? Accurate. <laughs> uh, do we cl- well? Do we class the Shining as can he do no wrong, even though he hates it? Oh yeah. yeah. I thought thinner was kind of eh. Eh. Then it was okay. Hey, can we class uh, Carrie as, as do no wrong, being that he doesn't remember right it? <laughs> Which one? There's been two. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, that is true. They did have to. We'll, I'll tell you what, we'll class the first one as he's done no wrong. Second one, we will just class as Stephen King has no involvement in it. What's that uh, Stephen King movie where they end up and they're in Las Vegas and it's like the end of the world? The Stand. Yeah, that was oh, really yeah. good. Yeah. I like that. Didn't he, didn't he also do the thing? Yeah. No, that was a Stephen no, King. No, he didn't do the thing. He did a. Uh... That was, uh. That was John Carpenter, wasn't it? Was yeah. No, John Carpenter did. It. Yeah, the thing. You're right. Yeah, I did the thing. thing. Yeah. Okay. I have, in fact, I actually have both DVDs in my uh, movie cabinet, so I know it was that nice. one. Nice. So he did the fog too, uh, right? Did he do the fog? Yeah, but yeah, yeah he, that's he did the fog. I don't, and like I don't know if he had anything to do with that really bad remake, which I have actually, unfortunately, watched. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that too. Yeah, I've seen that. That's Stephen King's The Mist, the original story. The Mist. Yep. yep. I was just about to mention. Oh, uh, don't. That's really uh, cool. please don't. That's not the movie where Thomas Jane shoots his family and then about, there's no bullets in the gun and then he finds out that the U.S. Army's moved in. Is it that one? Yeah, and that, yeah. that's definitely not how the book ended. It, I hate the ending so much, but the rest of it they captured well. Mm. Mm. How'd you guys feel about uh, it? Isn't, isn't that fun? It's not quite an occurrence for Stephen King uh, books. They're always different when they're turned into movies. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. especially I, it, it was with the exception of Rose Red, which the movie came first. Rose Red, oh, mm. yeah. yeah, I love they, uh, Rose Red. Pet Cemetery, the new one, they totally. Yeah, Ooh, they, I remember. They I remember changed the that whole crow. movie. I do like the, the ending though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pet Cemetery. Ending, that was kind yeah. of like nothing but dread as soon as I saw that. I, I, I remember first watching. It, I'm like, oh please no, please no, please no, <laughs> because you knew exactly what was going to come. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Let me tell you something. Just uh, like a year ago, I was at Shoprite, the grocery store, and I'm like, I'm actually going to rent a movie out the Red Box machine, a physical yeah. movie. I'm going to rent it, okay. and I hit Pet Cemetery, and then I get home, and it's Cemetery of Pets. It's not even <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! So bad. <laughs> I still watch it because I paid two dollars. <laughs> Might as well get your money's worth, ain't you? That's right. Come on, How'd you guys feel about Pinhead? Those that series. That's I a good. Pinhead. I think eventually it went a little bit off the rails, but you know, like all franchises that go on a bit yeah. long. Yeah. Remember when I said about the bar being so high? Well, that's exactly what happened in the second one. That bar was so high. I must admit, I didn't mind the third one, but that? I, but I'm even bothered with the rest of because I just oh, know yeah, it's going to be so crap. Right. <laughs> Gotta mention Final I Destination, though. Oh, yeah, that there was Final Destination. Godly. That's oh, really yeah. good. 
Final Destination is a good a good series. It's a it's a great concept. You know, you mm. cheated he's to one way or the other. Right. Oh, and the Candyman makes a cameo appearance in one of them. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Doesn't he do? Doesn't he do it in majority of them? I think he, he does in more than one. one. I, I think you're right, Dino. Actually, he's like the, the mortician, candy. right? Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you something. Final Destination has invaded the psyche of everyone because how many times are you driving down the interstate or the freeway? Well, yeah, no, and there's truck. semi trucks and stuff. Final I can't look at two trucks properly when they're side by side. <laughs> oh, I like, tell no, you, I tell you guys, yet. there's been a couple times <laughs> where, with my daughter. We've been um, we've been in a, on a flight, and we've had to divert. And then she'll be like, Daddy, in Final Destination, I'm like, let's not talk about that until we get on the ground. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to talk about Final Destination. <laughs> one, of the, one, of one, of one of the best things that happened in the Final Destination movie was in the second movie. And there was that part like, where he was in the dentist's office and you thought he was going to die in there. How they kept playing on that and playing on that. And then all of a sudden he gets outside and he runs like in a construction area and suddenly the glass drops oh, on yeah. him. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> but I think the corniest one was Final Destination, the 3D one. That was like, yeah. <laughs> uh. yeah. Wait, did they do a, a, a Friday the Thirteenth in 3D? Oh yeah, they and, did. Um, yeah, you know what other movie they, they did in 3D that was uh, complete trash? <laughs> My Bloody oh. Valentine in 3D. Oh god, I didn't even bother with that. My girlfriend likes that, and I'm like, this movie sucks. What about that? Uh, the core, my death day, happy death day, or whatever the hell. Uh, I do I like that. I like it. I like, it and I, I gotta be supportive because I'm a big fan of Scott Lobdell, the writer. Mm. He, Honestly, he wrote really comics for many, many years. That's his format. So, uh, obviously, whether I, I'm gonna be supportive of it. But in, in all honesty, I thought it was pretty good. The second one, the second one was more sci-fi than horror. Right. Mm. The first one was good. I don't. I don't know if you guys know this, but it, you might find it interesting. The writer of that, Scotty Lobdell, also wrote um, the Age of Apocalypse X Men series from all the one of the biggest X Men crossovers okay. ever. That's his. He did that. Huh. Okay. So, Dean, who's your uh, favorite all time <laughs> horror horror guy? You know, are you a Jason or who? I would actually say, I'd actually say like a horror villain that I can relate to for whatever reason. Not some, I know, well, Michael was driven mad by whatever it was. Freddy's just burnt alive. But I always kind of find that I kind of find the ones that actually have a noble cause. That I kind of like, yes, I do like them because they actually have a genuine reason why they're doing it. Yeah. Well, you I mean, know. Do, do you guys watch The Flash? The Flash? Yeah, yeah. yeah. TV series, yeah. I yeah. I seen uh, this season, I don't know if you, anyone has seen it, uh, the uh, second villain has been Mirror, Mirror Master. Actually, it's a Mirror Mistress. But she's actually a villain that I like because she actually has a reason why she's doing what she's doing. It's not so much because she wants to kill The Flash because she doesn't. But yeah. from what she sees, and if I'm reading this right, and I probably, probably am, She's doing what she thinks is justified, but she's not inherently evil by her standards. Right. See, I tell well, you. Yeah, see, I agree with that, actually. Yeah, Where they, they think it's right. They think they they're doing like what they need to do. You know, didn't Leatherface sort of do the same thing? You know, the only reason he killed them was because he went into the, because they went into that house. Mm, you know? He came mm. from a crazy family. That man was just crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know, he was a man. He was he was what about yeah. Amityville Horror? Oh yeah, that's the other thing I hate about horror movies. You have such a cliche plot like the house right. is haunted. Oh no, let's buy it on the cheap. Let's right. move it. No, please don't. Just don't. Just so don't guys, do that. y'all know I live in New York, right? I've actually been to the Amityville house. I was doing some work. Oh, you've in been Long there. Nice. Oh wow, you've been there. Went to the house. That's now they changed cool. the windows in the front. And the house is for sale. And when, you, when you're when driving through the neighborhood, which you don't see from all the movies about this house, it's in the middle of a regular neighborhood. There's a 
house 30 feet on either side of it. It's on oh, a wow. regular street. It's not isolated at all. Yeah, and in the movies, for effects, they make it out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah that's what it looks like. Not. It's in the middle of a suburban neighborhood. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. But I'll say my and favorite. Actual, right down the street from where I live, I live in a uh, town called Glen Spey in New York. If you Google, like, the 10 most haunted inns in the United States, there's one two minutes from here. It's called Burn Bray Mansion. Burn and they, Bray Mansion. Burn Bray Mansion. Uh, it was actually the singer, Silly cool Jones, uh, one of their president. He built, like, four mansions, one for him and three for his kids in a very small area. And Burn Bray was one of them. And it still functions as a bed and breakfast and they take you on tours, and oh, wow. it's supposed to be one of the most haunted places in America. And it's literally a two-minute drive from my house. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. That's, they, I speak, my... they speak like that. I haven't got anything near where I live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll there's say, nothing uh, around me. I will say this. The one thing that used to freak me out about New Orleans um, is those damn crypts. Those above grave, mm-hmm. above ground. They have the coffins inside. That's just crypt. regular. Yeah. That's yeah. just regular. It should creep you out more that if you bury a coffin in New Orleans, it's coming back out the no, ground. It's come, yeah, it's gonna come back up. They yeah. actually had one uh, here. They had a crypt here, and then they ended up uh, reburying the bodies under the ground. Look, I remember a uh, few years back, we were, uh, we went to New Orleans, and I kind of got a little scared. Now that we found up between that graveyard, and man, you talking about you want an awkward smell? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's so So, what do you guys think about um? Since we're talking about Crip, uh, the Tales from the Crip series, I thought it was pretty good. It's golden. It's the a original classic. Series, man. It was, it was the right amount of horror and cheesiness at the same yeah, time. Really cool Crip Keeper. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the Crip Keeper. He was cheesy and corny with his little puns, and the stories were slightly scary, but never really scary. And yeah. you know. And even if it did scare you a little, you know it was going to be wrapped up with a crappy joke by the crypt. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, for real. Though, I think yeah. if you showed some, say, a 15 year old from today that, they would literally lose their minds. <laughs> right. <laughs> I should point out something, chaps. I have actually seen uh, one of the Annabelle movies, I forget which one it was, on like a massive 30 foot screen. Oh, I had I four, like, four Annabelle in the road in front of me, and they were flipping screaming their heads off. And I'm like, why are you screaming your heads off? It's not even that. It's not even that funny. It's not even that scary. Mm. Right. Wow. Well, we got a uh, we got five minutes, fellas. And uh, Dean, Dino, thank you again. Another uh, episode of uh, Final Cut Film Reviews. Uh, anything else you want to add, or any content? And then also next week we're gonna have you on the arcade cabinet, so we can talk mm-hmm. video games. But um, I don't know. It's just weird. I, I, one thing that I used to like is when you were at the movie theater and you seen the previews and like, damn, that's yeah. going to be a scary movie. I'm going to have to check mm. it out. We haven't it's had scary. that in months and it right. just feels weird. It doesn't feel right to me watching a scary movie in my house. I much rather be in the movie okay. theater. The surround yeah, sound see, and, and I went and saw the uh, last ones I went and saw is both. I saw the first it and then the most recent one. I saw the second part of it. And those that I was recently and now the movie theaters are all closed. I'm kind of cursed over here because even though I have a beautiful wife and I love her, she hates horror movies. So when it's time to pick out a movie, she's like, I don't want to watch that. So I watch horror movies alone. Oh, uh, yeah, my girl. See, and I, it's the complete opposite for me. I, I'm not, I was never a huge fan, but my girlfriend actually got me really into them. Because she likes him, and I was like, "Well, if you like him, I guess that's what we're mm. watching." I'm not sure if mine likes horror, but I've, she, I've, she's watched that many, that many with me. I think she's becoming a bit better at um, watching, you know, deducing horror than I am, which is actually a bit worrying for me. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> for real though, for sure, for sure. And, uh, any any thoughts, Sharon, before we uh? Oh, uh, well, I, I, I don't know. I guess with the, I'm kind of waiting on the movie theaters to open back up, too. But at the same time, I, I think it's going to be a while before I get back in. Oh, yeah. You know, 
mm-hmm. I, I, I've kind of when they do my, reopen. I kind of built my own little movie theater up in here, so it's not. Oh, that's cool. It's not yeah. too bad for me, but you know, I, I do kind of miss. You know, I want. I was really looking forward to going to see the Quiet Place Part Two, which mm, I was. Now, you know, so I'm kind of kind of up in the air with it all right now. Right. There was yeah. so much coming out for release as well. I mean, uh, Black Widow, which is Scarlett Johansson's last movie, was oh, supposed yeah. to be last month. Wonder Woman was supposed to be, I think, in about three weeks, I think it was. And the Chris Nolan movie, I yeah. think, is The Kingsman as well. Is so still... they've all been put back. But hopefully... Well, they said the Kingsman is due for the release in theaters, and they said they're mm. not changing it. So I I like, might be... well, we'll see what happens, because they might actually have to change it. Well, like, unfortunately, because mine open in about three weeks, so I'll have to just next time we do this, I'll have to keep everyone in America apprised of if it's got any better or if it's getting worse. So hopefully yeah, it's plus. Sure. Yeah, uh, hopefully you, you should have meant to send ours some pointers so we can get movie theaters going back over. <laughs> <laughs> watch yeah, an IMAX movie. Nobody wants right. to watch IMAX. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I think um, I think uh, we're gonna. I don't know, man. It doesn't look well. And I know that the movie, I know that the cinemas are hurting real bad. And I just think COVID-19 yeah, is just going to change the whole movie. The whole, that whole business model is going to yeah. be, it's going to be different. You know, that being it, said, right down the street from here, where I've been a number of times, I saw the new It movie there. I've, I saw Straight out of Compton there. We have a drive-in. Ooh, straight out of Compton was Dude, good. Mm. Drive-in theaters should become the standard again. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. it. Those would be cool, yeah. See, I agree with that. They should start some making them. Stuff on the ground, a couple people chilling in the back of the car. You drink, right. snack, everything. So cool, great, and they're they're very very nice for watching horror movies. Do they yeah, have yeah. drive-in movie theaters uh, in in uh, the UK? Well, funnily enough, uh, my lady sent me a link. Somewhere n- near where I am is actually doing a series of drive-ins but the tickets are so expensive oh uh, yeah that's a problem too but don't, usually with the drive-ins here you they give you a whole you can watch a whole list of movies right is that the normal yeah movie? i think yeah there's, you about, them, there's like a list the, of about uh, eight different thing. movies but the prices are still the same i mean no offense but it's actually cheaper to go to the cinema and watch it than it is actually a drive through my way the drive-in here it's because the drive-in's a novelty seven dollars a person and it's a double feature. You never go see one movie. It's two yeah, movies. you see back to back movies. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, you, that's something could... we could learn from uh, from you lot over there. Have what? Have two movies instead of one. Yeah, because yeah. with ours, it's a list of movies, and hey, you got to put some people in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Big old hey, long get, get under that blanket. Don't move. <laughs> and, and Regardless, your though, own, it's a fun night out. Bring your own, uh, bring your own soda and bring your own popcorn and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, real, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a popcorn machine in my house to kind of go with my screen. You yeah, know? you should. That'd be cool. Yeah. Tyrone, next pandemic, I'm coming to your house, man. Yeah, we're all going <laughs> to <Tyrone's laughs> pandemic, right? House. But oh, ladies yeah, and gentlemen, uh, we have another uh, UK Final Cut film reviews on Deeper Than Music Radio featuring the Arcade cam- Cabinet crew. This is a, a mashup, if you will. Um, Dino, where can people find your, your podcast and also your, uh, where are you? Self-promotion time. Self-promotion time. You can find me on Facebook, on, okay. Final, on Final Cut Reviews, and the same on Twitter as well. And since we are on the uh, subjects of gaming, I actually have a Twitter gaming channel called Final Cut Gaming. Oh, awesome. That I'm usually on there every single day, so I'm happy if somebody wants to vent their opinion on, your Twitter on anything. Your reviews. That's All right. cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening in. And uh, again, we'll be here again next week. So everybody have a good one. Uh, Americans, let's let's all wear masks. I, I, I want this over with. Yeah, uh, let's be careful. <laughs> and UK, uh, UK and Adino, uh, happy happy opening back up. Hopefully, the curve will, will be down. So, ladies, let's, and hope, let's hope so, chaps. Right. Let's hope so. Next time, Donald Trump has an idea, don't Deep listen. Next time, Donald Trump tries to get elected, don't, don't listen elect him. to him. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. The core of you.
the fans the truth is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. It's deeper than music. Deeper than music.